Welcome back to the IBJJF podcast. My guest today is Michael Lange. Michael is a three-time world champion, and he's the current head coach at Alliance Sao Paulo. Michael, thank you so much for joining me. Danny, thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here today, you know, talking about a little bit my upcoming competition and my next goals in my career. Thank you for, for having me here. Absolutely. And you've had such an amazing career in jiu-jitsu. But like you mentioned, you have a competition coming up. You're coming back for the upcoming Pan No Gi in Texas. That's going to be going down from October 14th to the 16th. Can you talk about why you decided to compete again and why you chose the Pan No Gi? Yeah, that's a good question, Danny. You know, people just say to me, hey, Langi, we are glad to, to, to see you back to the competitions. But the point is, I'm not back to competing. I'm still retired. I'm just back for the one specific competition, the panel gi. And the reason that I back is be, that I'm back is because I never fought panel gi before. And that's the only title that I don't have in IBJJF organization. So with gi, I won words, pen, arrows, uh, Brazilian national, Brazilian national team, South America, you know, everything. And no gi, I won words, European Championship and Brazilian National, but never uh, fought but, uh, Pam before. So that's the reason that, that I'm back. You know, I just want to try to get this title and just make history. I mean, uh, I know that's going to be harder. I'm not saying that I'm going to win, but I have to try at least, you know. So that's the reason I decided to fight because I thought, man, in five, 10 years, if I think, Oh, I didn't try at least. Maybe it's going to make me feel bad. You know, if I go there and if I would not be able to win, it's part of the game. Win or lose is part of the game. We cannot control that. But I have to try at least, you know, so that's the reason I'm back in action. And it's going to be a really tough division. You're competing at middleweight this time around. You've got guys like Gucci, Barbosa, Oliver Taza, Igor Felice, Vitor Oliveira. Have you looked at the registrations and the signups and, and what do you think of that division as of right now? You know, it, it it's part of the game. I fight a, as lightweight and you know, all my my whole life, you know, and in my opinion, it's the toughest, toughest division. You know, I remember, you know, in a world championship, we had like a 10, 12 people that uh, they they would be able to to win the the, the awards, you know, so the level is pretty high. So, man, it's part of the game, you know. Panogi is a, is a very nice competition. It's a pretty high level. So, yeah, I was expect this. And you mentioned some of the Nogi titles that you've won throughout your career. I think when people think about Michael Lange, they really think about your Gi titles and your Spider Guard and all the things you did with the kimono. So how difficult was it for you to adjust to the Nogi game and to kind of change your game around to, to be a bit different without those Gi grips? Yeah, that's a good question too because you know people know me because they spy the guard and you know that's what i love to to do most and when i started training no gi uh, was hard to me i have to build a new game so today i like to play some like uh reverse de la riva you know now i'm feel comfortable to 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 play no gi uh, of course i love with gi much more but no gi, uh, I think is very important you understand. And I feel like a pleasure to train no gi today, you know, especially now that he hooks is available. So I think it made, you know, the no gi game -y more, you know, like a funny to, 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 to play. And yeah, I'm, I'm just to prepare myself, you know, uh, really hard as usual, uh, training all the areas, you know, on top on bottom, uh, takedowns, a lot of heel hooks, and I'm feel like uh, ready to go, you know, but yeah, from the beginning it was really hard, you know, that transition from the gi to no gi game, especially because my gi game just depend a lot of the grips, but yeah, I, I, I could, you know, like adapt very well my, my game for the no gi as well. When you started your competition career, was it mostly gi training or did you mix in some no gi from the beginning? Actually, uh, my first no gi competition was 2009. 2009, yeah, Brazilian national. I was uh, black belt already, but in Alliance, 
we had uh, Gui from Monday to Thursday, and all, uh, every Friday was a Nogi train. So yeah, I, I just train once a week. I think it's not it's not enough, you know, if you are looking forward to to compete in a Nogi. But now I'm training well, at least in a, in a regular schedule here in, uh, at the gym, you know, at least three times per week. Of course, now I'm preparing myself for a Nogi competition. So I'm, I'm training every single day at Nogi. But we have Nogi class now every day here if you want to train no gi you can you you, you are be able to do it every every day here you know but i mean uh here in brazil you know the culture is a little bit different than united states for example people here prefer much much more gi you know of course no gi is getting popular but it's different than us uh, where there are a lot of wrestlers so the transition is going to be you know like easier for them you know uh from the wrestling to a no gi game you know, but here in, in Brazil is a little bit different. But yeah, no gi is getting popular. Well, we can't wait to watch you compete at the Pan No Gi. It's going to be an amazing event. It's going to be so exciting to watch you back in action. But now I wanted to take a step back and talk a bit about some of your history. So you received your black belt from Cobrinha in 2008, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But Cobrinha is a legendary competitor. He's accomplished so much. What type of influence did Cobrinha have on you as a competitor and also just as a person? yeah actually i got my black belt 2007. uh well i just met cobrinha in capoeira i started training capoeira with him and in that time he was like a very good capoeira guy so he already had like a very big influence on my capoeira game so cobrinha was a guy that i would like to be i would like to follow that guy you know he he has a concept of the hard work uh, and that's one one thing that I really believe that's good in any era in your life. So when he started train uh, Jiu Jitsu, he just invited me to be part of the class. I went there, you know, because because then for influence. And I thought, all right, if Cobrinha is training Capoeira, something good there's over there, you know. So I, I just want to try. I just want to give it a try. And I started training Jiu Jitsu. I just got in love with this. And when I realized it, I started, you know, to dedicate myself, you know, full time in Jiu Jitsu. I just found in Jiu Jitsu, you know, that, you know, uh, I think in that moment, Jiu -Jitsu, in terms of competition, Jiu Jitsu had like a, one better organization than Capoeira. So, yeah, I got in love in Jiu Jitsu and I started training, you know, like every day and dedicating my, my life for this sport. So what I learned from, from Cobrinha is, you know, hard work pays off. You know, we have to work hard if you want something, you know, everything, there's a price and we have to be able to pay this price. You know, we have to dedicate ourselves. Uh, we need to have a discipline, you know, and that's what I learned from him, from him, you know. And one thing that's very important, you say here, you know, most of the people just ask to me, Lengi, uh you 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 are one guy that man you competed on all like a, over 20 years and what about your motivation you know, to keep competing and give your best every single day but i gotta say one thing you know motivation and it's nothing because a few times in my life i just wake up motivated to do something you know most of the time in my life i just wake up with the discipline to do not what i want to do but what i need to do to get closer to my goal you know what i mean you know most of the time i, ju I just wake up and i said man i'm just tired you know i just want to stay here sleep a little bit more just watch some moving but the discipline says to me no man you have to go there you have to train hard because if you do this you're gonna get closer to your goal you know so that's the most important lesson that i learned from from Cobrinha. If you want something, you have to be able to pay the price. So hard work pays off. That's amazing. And in addition to Cobrinha, there's so many great leaders at Alliance. You have Gigi Paiva, Jacare, Fabio Grigel. How important was that strong leadership core to your success throughout your career in Jiu-Jitsu? Yeah, I'm a luck guy, you know, just to found, you know, Cobrinha, Fabio, Jacare, Gigi, all those guys in my life. You know, with Cobrinha, 
I just uh, learned, you know, how hard you have to work to get something in terms of competition. And the same concept, uh, Fabio, I, I just could realize that Fabio has, you know what I mean? It's not as a competitor, because when I, when I met Fabio, he was not competing anymore, but as a professor, as a master, and especially as a businessman, that guy worked really, really hard, you know? So uh, what I could realize is successful guys, they have, you know, the same concept about hard work. We have to work harder than anybody else. So Fabio just, I think if, if, if I can, you know, like a shoes, what is the best and the most important lesson that Fabio taught me, I remember, I was winning a lot of competition. I was doing a great job, you know, as an athlete. And I think Fab just told me, Langi, you know, you are doing a great job as an athlete, but now I just want to teach you a lesson, you know. To be a good athlete, athlete, it doesn't it doesn't mean that you're gonna be a good instructor, and it doesn't mean you're gonna be a good businessman, you know. For each person, you have to de develop a different skills you know when you are an athlete is more about you it's all about you we have to be selfish but when you you are a professor is more about to give something than to take something for you you know it's not what what is best for you is what best for the team you know that's what you need to understand you have to prepare yourself you need to understand that when you're gonna teach some class you know and that, I think that's the biggest mistake, you know, because when I started training jiu-jitsu, if you ask to me, hey, man, what is your goal? My goal was to be a world champion. That's what I what I wish most. Uh, and I just got in love with the jiu-jitsu in terms of sport. But when you open your own gym and you're going to talk about martial arts, you know, the language that you're gonna talk about in a competition class is totally different than you're gonna talk about in a beginner's class, intermediate class, advantage class, it doesn't matter, you know? So that's what he teach to me, you know? You need to understand how to run the business and how to run the class, you know? It's totally different to teach the competition class, then the beginner's class, then advantage class. So you need to develop these skills. And yes, I can realize how important it is we do this, this transition. And that's what I'm living now. You know, I just stopped to compete. Now I start to teach and run the, the Alliance headquarters. And at the same time, I have to run the business, you know. And I could realize that's totally different than to be an athlete, a professor, and then a businessman, you know. Let's dive into that a bit more. You mentioned you're the head coach now at Alliance Sao Paulo. That's such a big responsibility. You're teaching students of all levels, from beginners to professional competitors. What's been the most fulfilling part of that experience for you so far? That's a good question, man. It's very easy you teach a competition class because over there you're going to find guys that they already know jiu-jitsu. So we just have, of course, we have tried to, to, to help them to to improve their games but it's the easiest part the point is how you're gonna introduce someone that never trained jiu-jitsu before and how what you have to do you know to make that people understand what is jiu-jitsu in terms of leverage base self-defense and all those aspects you know so it's in my opinion, of course, it's much easier you teach a competition class than a beginner's class. You know, the skills that you need to, to develop to be a very good instructor uh, in a beginner's class is harder than in a competition. One of the most beautiful things about jiu-jitsu is that it's growing so fast. And it's not just growing for competitors in the competition scene but also for the people who train as a hobby and do it, you know, just recreationally a couple times a week. 
What's your first of all, what's your opinion on the growth of the competition scene and how we've seen a lot more athletes dedicate their entire lives to jiu-jitsu and co- competition and winning gold medals? Yeah, we have two points. You know, uh, the first one is jiu-jitsu as a competition. You know, competition is growing. IBJJF uh, is doing a great job, you know, and the level uh, is pretty high. You know, we can realize now all those athletes, you know, they are good in terms of tech techniques, but also in terms of uh, uh, technically and physically, and especially mentally as well. But there's an important point also that the jiu-jitsu as a martial arts, you know, jiu-jitsu is for everyone, but by different ways. So uh, in my academy, for example, we, ha- uh, we have like uh, over 500 students over there. And from three to 5% of those guys, they are a uh, professional. You know, most of them, they just want to go there and have a fun, you know, do some exercise, feel more confident, you know, learn self-defense, you know, do some, uh, I don't know, whatever. But the point is, uh, jiu-jitsu is the best sport ever. You know what I mean? In jiu-jitsu, you can learn some lesson that you can apply on, but especially off the mat. You know, jiu-jitsu is the art to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. That's what happened in life. You know, bad things just happen. We cannot control that. What you can control is how I going to respond in a bad situation. You know, for example, I'm going to train with you. You're going to pass my guard. That's a fact. You know, I can respond by using the emotion and get worsened. You know, I'm going to push you, extend my arm, and then I'm going to make me tap. Or I can understand, all right, it's part of the game. And what can I do to get get out of here, you know, and respond by using the reason, you know? In life, is the same thing. Bad things just happen. You cannot control that. You can respond by using the emotion and get worsened. Or you can respond by using the reason and try get out of the problem as a better person, you know. So another important lesson that I learned from jiu-jitsu uh, is how to adapt yourself. You know, sometimes you have a game plan, you have a goal, you're gonna try to do something, but jiu-jitsu is action reaction. So when you when you're gonna try to pass your opponent's guard and then he's gonna give you a hard time, what do you have to do? You have to find another way. We have to adapt yourself, you know. In life is the same thing. Sometimes we have a plan, but once again, life is a dark place to live. You know, bad things just happen, you know. So you, when, when, whenever bad things just happen, you can just take a seat, cry, and complain. Or you need to understand that it's part of the game and try to adapt yourself and find another way. So jiu-jitsu is amazing, you know, because what you learn on the mat you can apply in our real life every single day. So jiu-jitsu is for everyone. I think that mindset and those lessons that you pass on to your student are what make you such a great coach. So congratulations again on all your coaching success. It was amazing to watch you coach at the Worlds and see the new role that you're taking over so well. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, uh, that, that's my goal right now. You know, it's not only teach jiu-jitsu as a sport, but also as a personal development, you know. As I said, jiu-jitsu is a very nice sport. And then you can apply all the lessons that you learn on the mat, off the mat as well. And also, yeah, that's my goal today. So what are the plans that you have after the Pan Nogi in October? So as I said, you know, I'm not back for the competitions. I'm just back for this specific competition. I just want to fight this one. Just, you know, uh, try to 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 win the, the, the Pan Nogi and then... I will be back to my to my academy. So my goal is gonna be uh, give my best for my students. Try uh, all of my students, you know, just to to improve their game and be successful. Of course, uh, I have uh, one important. How can I say? You know, it's not like a, I think. Yeah, it's a job. You know, in a in front. In, in, in an alliance association as well, we're gonna open a, a new school, you know, here. It's gonna be the Alliance SP 
uh, in, in Jardins. That's a very good air over here. So that's a very good project that we have here as well. I opened a, a, a school in my hometown. So my, my brother is running the, the business over there. So yeah, man, uh, when I finish that competition, I have to be back to reality, you know, work harder, you know, try uh, uh, to help my students, try to grow my business, try to grow the, the Alliance Association. So yeah, that's my, my, my plan, you know, I have to, to become a real businessman. <laughs> right back to work. <laughs> Well, Michael, thank you so much again for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Do you have any final message you want to share with the listeners before we head out of here? And I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here and talking about a little bit my life, about uh, this return to the competition. And what I want to say is uh, it's not like a, like a lesson, but it's my experience. I just want to say something just just happened with me, you know, when I decided to leave from Jiu-Jitsu, I was a blue belt, a young kid, and I thought, all right, I have to talk with my dad, and I have to say to him that I want to leave from Jiu-Jitsu. And I was like a little bit scared because I didn't know how my dad going to receive that message. But one day I said, Dad, I just want to talk to you. I'm trained Jiu-Jitsu. That's what I love to do most. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And my dad told me, all right, I'm going to support you no matter what. I don't have... You know a lot of money but you know i'm gonna try my best to to support you but i'm just gonna ask you one thing you have to be the best and i said all right dad i'm gonna do this and during my career i just won eight world title and on my mind i was doing exactly what i promised to my dad but when i when i lost uh one competition i, I was like a almost three years no lose and i lost to leandro low in abu dhabi and when i came back to brazil i just uh, thought about that conversation that i had with my dad and i was like uh, so upset i went to my to my hometown i, I, I said that i just want to talk to you you know i promised to be the best and i lost that, that competition but i promise i'm gonna train even more i'm gonna try my best and i will be the best once again and he told me, Michael, I think you didn't understand very well our first conversation. When I ask, when I ask it to you to be the best, it's not the best jiu-jitsu ever. It's not that the best, you know, like a fighter, fighter in the world. You know, when I said to you to be the best is to be the best, to be better today than you were yesterday and better tomorrow than you are today. I asked for your personal development, but now we're gonna I'm gonna teach you an, an, a new lesson. Sometimes you're gonna give your best, but your best is not enough. But it's part of the life. Life is not easy. Life is a dark place to live. So sometimes you're gonna give your best, and your best is not enough. But it's all good. The point is, it's not how many times you're gonna win, but the point is how many times you're gonna lose. And the day after that, we're gonna get up and keep moving forward you know what i mean so that's what what i want to say for everyone that is watching us right here you know uh don't don't worry about the final result you have to enjoy the journey and, and give your best no matter what but you need to to understand that sometimes your best not enough and it's all good it's part of the game and the day after that you go back to your home you're gonna think about your mistakes and we're gonna try get better, you know. But yeah, that's what I want to say. You know, try to be your best version and improve yourself in all the areas every single day. That's an amazing message to end on. Thank you again, Michael. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll see you guys soon for another episode. Take care. Thank you. Man. Bye.